Okay, so depending on your math skills, this could be a very easy question to answer. But uh, what's going to make this question interesting is that we're not going to use a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. The question here is, which is the greatest number? All right, we're also dealing with a multiple choice question. Let's go ahead and take a look at our options. So 1 half, the square root of 2 over 2, 2 over the square root of 2, 1 over 2 times the square root of 2, and 1 over the square root of 2. So which uh, of these numbers here is the greatest number? All right, so this is the question. Again, no calculator. But if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go to take a look at these values again. And there is no time rush here. And there's different approaches that you could take to um, answer the question. But obviously, the main question here is, which is the greatest number out of all of these various numbers? And if you figure this out, well, let's go to see the answer. You would have selected C because the greatest number is 2 over the square root of 2. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, there, should no, uh, there should not be a square root of 2 uh, in the denominator. In other, in other words, you might be thinking to yourself, we may have to rationalize that. Well, yes, indeed, uh, you could do that, but that's not the question, right? So you don't want to go off on uh, any tangents here. You want to answer the question and not worry about uh, the kind of the form that these radicals are in. Because yes, indeed, uh, for those of you that are pretty strong in algebra and square roots and radicals, these things here need to be kind of fixed up. But that's not the kind of the point of this problem. The point is, which is the greatest value? All right, so there it is. And if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for your ability to order numbers. Because you look at a problem like this, it's like, hey, this is pretty easy. Which is the greatest uh, number? You know, well, these numbers, the way they're written, uh, and when we're comparing uh, fractions with radicals, you know, it may be a little bit confusing. Certainly, if the question was, which is the greatest uh, number, and we have one, two, three, four, you know, five as our numbers, this is an easy question. So, what can we do here to make this uh, an easy question as well? Well, uh, some of you out there that have had a tough time with this problem are going to be upset because when you see the solution, you're going to be like, wow, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that is so easy. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so here is our problem. Now, if we were able to use a calculator, this would be uh, too tough of a problem because we could just go into our calculator and get decimal approximations for each one of these fractions and then identify which is the greatest value. But uh, unfortunately for us, we can't use a calculator. So what can we do? Well, we're dealing with fractions. And uh, the confusing part of this problem is that we have all these square roots in the numerator and the denominator. And this makes it more difficult, more challenging to identify the greatest and smallest values here. All right. But uh, what you can do anytime you have a problem that you're not quite sure you know, how to approach, to always try to think of a simpler version of that problem. So for example, let's say I had this problem, one half, one third, and one fourth, and the question is select, or which is the uh, greatest value, okay? Select the greatest value. Now, most of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's easy, it's one half, and you would be correct. But uh, let's just consider these fractions right here. What could be an easy way that we can uh, order these fractions or identify the greatest value of these fractions? Because if, we can, because if we can figure this out, then we can figure out the actual problem. All right, so let's just go ahead and think about this uh, simpler version of this problem. We have one half, one third, and one fourth. 
All right, now anytime you are dealing with fractions, you always want to consider the LCM or the LCD. Okay, the LCD is the lowest common denominator, and if we were adding these fractions up, we would have to have all the denominators the same. Of course, you need to find the LCD, which is effectively the LCM, the lowest common multiple of these numbers. But I kind of like to use the word LCD as, a, as it's a little bit more common for most people. So uh, finding the LCD or LCM is uh, tremendously uh, uh, you know, beneficial when you are dealing with problems with fractions. Okay, This comes up not only in arithmetic, but in algebra as well. So let's go, go ahead and just find that LCD and see what we can do with it. All right, so here is the LCD for our fractions, 1 half, 1 third, and 1 fourth. The LCD is 12. Now, if you don't know how to find the LCD or if you're struggling with fractions in general, I'll give you some uh, specific recommendations on how you can improve in this stuff. But this is the LCD. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply each one of these fractions by the LCD. Now, some of you might be concerned that that's actually going to change the value uh, relative to each one of these fractions. In other words, is this going to you know, make our problem uh, different? Well, no, it's not. Okay? So for example, if I have one, two, and three, these numbers, this is the smallest and three is the greatest. And if I multiply uh, these numbers by 12, nothing really changes other than I mean, in terms of which is the least and which is the greatest value. So 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 12 is 24, and 3 times 12 is 36. So 36 is the greatest here, and 36 is the greatest right here. So we're multiplying each number. Uh, now, that number could be a fraction as well. But we're not really uh, changing the relative value in between uh, with respect to these numbers. Okay. So why would I want the LCD? Well, the LCD will allow us to clear these fractions. Okay, so let me go ahead and show what I'm talking about right now. All right, so here is our LCD. It is 12. And when I multiply 12 by each of these fractions, remember, I'm not uh, kind of um, changing the relative uh, um, order of these values. Okay, the values are effective. The mathematical values stay the same. So we already know that 1 half is the greatest value, but let's go ahead and take this LCD 12 and multiply it by each fraction. So 12 times 1 half is 6. 12 times 1 third is 4. Okay, so 3 goes into 12, 4. And then 12 times 1 fourth is 3. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at these numbers. 1 half we know, or hopefully you know, is the greatest value out of 1 half, 1 third, and 1 fourth. But it's very easy to identify when we don't have fractions. If I said, hey, which is the greatest value, 6, 4, or 3? Well, 6 is clearly the greatest, and 3 over here is clearly the least, which is, uh, you know, corresponds to our uh, fraction 1 fourth. So if we take our fractions and we multiply by the LCD, well, we clear the fractions away, then it's very easy to determine which is the greatest value. All right, so this is going to be our primary strategy to figure this problem out. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. So first things first, uh, first we have to identify which is the lowest common uh, denominator out of all these denominators. So here I have twos, and here I have the square root of two. I have the square root of two here. Two square root of two happens to be the lowest common denominator. Now, again, if you're not quite sure why this is the LCD, you definitely, need to do, you definitely need to do some review on fractions, but this is not that difficult, but hopefully uh, most of you uh, understand why this is the LCD. Remember, actually, let's go back to this problem here, one-third and let's say one-fourth. Well, let's say one-fifth, okay? So I'll just kind of, I just can't help myself because I suspect some of you out there are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you're going too fast for me. I don't understand why this is the LCD. All right, so if I have one-third and one-fifth, what is the LCD uh, between these two fractions? Let's say we're adding these together. Hopefully, you would say the LCD is 15, and you would be correct. The LCD, the lowest common denominator, is basically uh, the product of all the prime factors, and I'm kind of loosely stating this, between all the denominators. So all the, the values in the denominators, the prime factors of each, have to be represented in the LCD. So, for example, here, 3 times 5, 
uh, this is a prime factor. Uh, one and three is a prime factor of three, and one and five is a prime factor of five. So one times three times five, the total product of all the prime factors of all the numbers in the denominators is the LCD. So here we have two, two, we have a square root of two. So two is prime, square root of two, it needs to be represented in our LCD. So two times the square root of two is our LCD. Of course, this is already the lowest common denominator. And then right here, we already have the square root of two. All right, so hopefully that kind of uh, helps out. But again, if you're struggling with this, I'll give you some recommendations how you can, uh, you know, really understand this better. All right, but let's go ahead and take our LCD now, two square root of two, and uh, uh, two square root of two, and now multiply that by this entire fraction. Okay, now when this half, when you do this, uh, after this happens, a lot of you are going to be saying, "Oh my goodness, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is a very easy problem to figure out." All right, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just don't you just love the way I kind of sneak that in? And you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just hurry up and finish the problem up. Stop interrupting the video. I really don't want to hear you talk about how you want more subscribers to your channel. Listen, I get it. <laughs> you know, I definitely do. But this is important. It's important to me because it's important to me to reach as many people as possible uh, and help them with math. That's why I do these videos. And I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have, I think, well, I'm pretty close to 3,000 videos. I really don't count day to day, but I have a lot of content. And I want people to use that content. I want to help people. And the only way I can reach a, a, you know, kind of a broader audience, kind of have the biggest classroom possible, is to get people like yourself to subscribe to my channel. Okay, that's a great way to support my work. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. And uh, this is basically the result of taking our LCD and multiplying by these fractions. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at each one uh, step by step. All right, so we have uh, two times the square root of two times one half. So when we're multiplying fractions, remember this is gonna be over one. Anytime you wanna think of something as a fraction, just put it over one. So two is going to cross cancel with this two. So you're left with a square root of two. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and do the next fraction, right? So this is just one by one. So two square root of two, we're gonna multiply by the square root of two over two. So this is gonna be twos, okay? We're gonna, this two is gonna cross cancel with that two. So I'm left with the square root of two times the square root of two. The square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four, which is two. Okay, so that's the result of multiplying by the LCD. Now let's go ahead and continue forward here and hopefully most of you are starting to see what's gonna happen here. So this uh, two square root of two over one times two over square root of two, the uh, square root of two is here, cross cancels, that's just gonna be two times two, which is four. All right, so just continuing on, two square root of two times two square root of two, the total two square root of two uh, cross cancel, so we're left with just one, and then here the square root of two will cross cancel with the square root of two, so we'll have two times one, which is two. All right, so this is the result of multiplying by the LCD, now we can you know, easily see these numbers and compare these numbers in terms of which is the greatest value, which of course is four, okay? And that corresponds to this uh, fraction, two over the square root of two. All right, now hopefully you're going to remember this little strategy. And the strategy that I want to kind of emphasize again is the following. One, when you have a math problem and you're confused on what to do, always try to Think of a simpler version to that problem if you can, okay? Now, if you have this simpler version, think about how you can kind of, you know, uh, solve that simpler version and then go back to the actual problem. The second point I want to make is when you're dealing with fractions, okay, anything uh, in algebra or arithmetic, always think about the LCD or the LCM. It comes in quite handy uh, to solve a lot of problems. All right, now let me give you uh, some suggestions on uh, uh, those of you out there that are still struggling with fractions. Maybe you're looking like this person right now. Listen, you could definitely be like this person, but you have to put in some work, all right? You need to do some review, and that is quite normal, okay? Don't think that everybody who learns math, even advanced math, that everything just goes smooth. It absolutely doesn't, 
<laughs> I can tell you right now, who someone has a degree in theoretical mathematics, uh, you know, even a master's degree. Uh, I took classes, you know, in myself and my classmates, and we're struggling, okay? In other words, the uh, material is very complex. You're working hard, you're, you're struggling, you're like, okay, uh, you know, you have to, you know, um, get extra help from your teacher. This happens at all levels. Don't think that, you know, there's people out there where oh, everything goes nice and smooth. That's not the case. So don't give up. Uh, keep a positive attitude. Now, let me give you some specific recommendations on fractions and radicals. All right, so first things first, check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. Uh, kind of the stuff that we're talking about here would fall under like the algebra one kind of level of math. That would be a great uh, recommendation for those of you that might be taking a math course. Now, if you happen to be taking algebra two or pre-algebra, uh, or even pre-calculus, I'll leave those courses, or even geometry, you'll see all those courses, the, the links to those in the description. Now, if you are not a math student and you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Fan, you should have saw me way back in 1972. I was awesome at this math. Uh, I'm sure you were, okay? Uh, those were great times and maybe even know how to use a slide rule, which is awesome as well. But uh, you probably forgot most of all this stuff. Now, I have two great courses for those of you that kind of want to kind of relearn math. My first is my Math Foundations course. That's just a quick uh, basic math review, uh, and that's applicable for anyone out there that wants to get back into math. you got to get the basics down. This is a fast kind of starter course to uh, really kind of relearn arithmetic. We're talking about uh, decimals, place values, fractions, order of operations, positive and negative numbers, percent, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you want to kind of take it a step further, uh, and uh, really relearn your math skills, then take my uh, math skills rebuilder course. There I do arithmetic, algebra, geometry, even some basic trigonometry and probability and statistics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.